I only recently discovered Fujifilm X-RAW Studio and it is blowing my mind. If you shoot Fujifilm, you need to know about this. Hi everybody, for those of you who are new here, my name is Zach. I am a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And today I'm gonna just share a little bit about Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. If you have a Fujifilm camera, you can use Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. It's a free software that you can download from Fujifilm. They have all the instructions, a link to the download on the website. I will link that in the description of this video. So you can go there, you can see a compatibility chart if this program will be compatible with your camera and you can find all of the instructions about how to download and start using Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. So we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of that because you can just click that link down below and do it for yourself and it'll be so much easier. But what does it actually do? So if you shoot Fujifilm, you know these cameras have incredible processing options inside. So you can make photos straight to JPEGs that are processed with information you put into the camera ahead of time. So we have seven custom settings in the camera that we can save as various film recipes or film simulations. And so when we go out to shoot, we can shoot straight to JPEG and come home and our photos are instantly ready because all of that processing information is baked into the JPEGs from the camera and it's enjoyable and can add something really creative to your work. But what Fujifilm X-RAW Studio does is it takes that a step further and allows you to process your Fujifilm RAW files as whatever film recipe you want. So it essentially takes that idea of creating film recipes and gives you infinite possibilities after the fact. So it's not the same experience of going out and shooting and making something there in the moment and taking it home and it's done. There's a little bit of processing once you get home from your shoot, but it's a really amazing way of experimenting with film simulations. It's a really great opportunity to customize your settings to create a look that you are happy with. You can apply several settings to one image and find out what you like most. So instead of talking about it, let's go ahead and dive in. You need a Fujifilm camera connected to your computer in order to run Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. So go online to the link that I put in the description, download the software, go through the instructions, then you get your Fujifilm camera. You have to go into the settings, to the wrench, to the connection settings, to the PC connection mode, and then you have to be in USB raw conversion mode, and then you just connect your camera via the USB, which I'm gonna do now. Now, something important to note about using this software is that for it to work, you have to be shooting raw files in camera. So when I shoot on my X-Pro3, I'm typically shooting in raw plus JPEG, so I do have all of the raw files that I make from a shoot, but just something to know, you do need to be shooting in RAW in order to process the images later in Fuji X-RAW Studio. So what I've done here to start to give us a good place to work from is I always think about workflow first. So I wanna have a folder that contains all of my work. So for this specific video, I've made this folder called um, the date YouTube Fuji X-RAW Studio. I have a folder of RAW files from my X-Pro3 that I've taken over the past couple weeks on various shoots. And then I just went through and selected a few that I want to work on with you today. And I put those in the selects folder. Okay, so now I'm going to open up Fuji X-Raw Studio. What I've done is I've just navigated up here to for my source image folder. I've navigated to the folder I just showed you, 210821, that's today's date, YouTube, Fuji X-Raw Studio. And then I'm on my selects folder. So I know where all my images are. They're in my selects folder on my working SSD drive. And so here are my selections that we're gonna work on today. All right, so my camera wasn't connected, but now it's connected. So when you open this, the default is just to show you, um, I believe, how the images were shot in the camera. So for most of these, I was using my Kodachrome film recipe that I've talked about before on the channel. You can watch that video here if you like. So here's a photo of Alina shot in the studio and you can see it has the Kodachrome film recipe applied to it. Now the really cool thing is here are all my camera profiles so you can see all seven of them, right? Um, I have a Kodachrome Padilla which is one that I got from Kevin Mullins, it's black and white. Portra 800 which is from FujiXWeekly.com. Uh, 800 simulation which I also have a video about. A natural look that I created. Noir which is also from Kevin Mullins which is also another black and white film simulation, 
Portra 400, which is also from FujiXWeekly.com, similar to 800, but slightly different. And then Zneg is just my version of classic negative. So these are my seven custom settings that I use in my X-Pro3, and they're here in Fuji x -Raw Studio. Now up here under user profiles, this is where you can create custom profiles to save in this software. So you get options to save even more custom profiles than these seven. You can do that up here in user profiles, which I haven't done very many of them yet. I just was experimenting with the Zneg here. But if you wanted to save more profiles, you can do that up here. Um, down here are all the settings that you can change in the camera. So this isn't like Lightroom. There's not like an endless amount of settings for you to adjust the photograph, but you can change all of these settings here um, as you could in the camera, but you can do it in real time to the photo. So let's just take a look at these different film recipes as we apply them. So we have Kodachrome applied. Let's look at Padilla. Um, and you see it gives me this little message here. I think that's just because there's an inconsistency in the dynamic range option. I think dynamic range is one of the settings that won't carry over. So whatever you shot the photo at in the camera, as far as dynamic range goes, that can't be changed after the fact, but everything else can, as far as I know. If I'm wrong, correct me. So here you can see Padilla has been applied to Elena. It looks a little dark and kind of muddy, so I'm not loving that here. Let's look at Portra 800. See, it's a very filmic kind of stylized look, um, pretty soft, uh, interesting look, natural. Um, this is a little, this is a little blue to me, a little cold. You know, you could adjust that if you wanted. Noir again, a little bit too punchy for me in this situation. Portra four hundred, similar to Portra. 800 looks a little bit less muted to me, a little bit more saturated. And then Zneg is just my version of classic negative, which I think is a pretty cool look. For this one, I think I would keep Kodachrome. Actually, I might go to Zneg for this. I think I'm liking that better. Yeah. So this is an instance where, okay, I found a film recipe that I like a little bit more than what I shot it with. So now I can say convert and it will process this image as a JPEG. And if I go back to my folder, you can see here it is. It's a JPEG of the shot of Alina with my classic negative film recipe applied, which is not from the camera, but it looks like it was because it was processed in Fuji Extra Studio. So essentially it's allowed me to get that Fujifilm JPEG recipe and that JPEG look uh, to this photo, even though I didn't shoot it with this film simulation when I made the photo. So really cool. Um, if we go through here to a couple more of these, same idea. Let's look at what Zneg looks like on this one. Um, maybe let's look at Padilla. Let's look at Portra 400. Mm, I'm thinking we'll stay with Kodachrome for this one. Here's another example. So let's see what the black and whites look like while we're outdoors. It's pretty nice, a little bit too punchy, I think. Again, a little bit too punchy. We'll go with Portra 800. And then again, we can convert this. And if we go back to our main folder, here it is processed as a JPEG. Let's take a look at this photo. I think this one will be good in black and white. We apply Padilla, okay, I love that. Let's see what Noir looks like. Ooh, I kind of am liking this noir. So let's convert. Okay, and here it is. Looks really beautiful here in this black and white. I have a similar shot that I actually took on Tri-X 400 with my AE-1. Um, we can compare the two here. Really beautiful, love it. Okay, let's move on. Here's a shot of director Crystal Manich. We shot this in the Libero Theater in Santa Barbara. You can see she's right in front of the fly rail in the theater. And I shot this on the X-Pro3, again, with the Kodachrome film recipe applied. And I really actually love this look, so I probably wouldn't change it at all, but let's just see. So we apply um, the classic neg. I like it, but it's not as nice as the Kodachrome, I think. I don't think that the portraits will work here. We can look at natural. Natural's actually quite nice. Let's look at Padilla. And honestly, Padilla's kind of cool too. Yeah, I still am preferring the Kodachrome, 
but I might just process this as a black and white so we have it as an option. Here's another one. She's in the, the house of the theater now. And just to show you some of the settings you can change here. So if for instance, I, I decided that this photo was not at the right white balance, I could go here to white balance and change it. You can change it by all of these uh, predetermined settings like daylight, shade, fluorescent lighting, or you can even go by Kelvin temperature. So you can do all that here to white balance. You can adjust things like the color chrome effect, like the grain, the, the sharpness, noise reduction, clarity, all of these you can adjust. So if you find that, oh, this image looks too sharp to me, or it's not sharp enough, you can change all that here in these settings. All right, so let's look at this one of Steven. Let's see what Zneg looks like. Okay, let's see what natural looks like. Kodachrome. Let's see what Padilla looks like. These are pretty nice, but I think we're gonna keep it on Kodachrome. Pretty happy with what this looks like. Okay, here's a closer shot of Steven. Let's go with Padilla. It's a little bit too crunchy for me. So let's go into the shadows and just bring that back a little bit. It's a little bit too much. There we go. I think plus one is probably okay. And then we'll process this and have a nice black and white variant. We might do something similar with this photo. I really like actually the Zneg variant of this. And I think we might actually bring some contrast back. That looks pretty nice to me. So I think we'll do the same thing to this one. Uh, this one looks a little bit dark, a little bit warm to me, but let's go ahead and apply the Zneg film simulation and see what that does. Okay, immediately that looks better. So you can see here that the film simulation for Zneg is at 5,600 Kelvin, so that fixed our white balance. And it looks really great to me. I think the only thing I'll do is bring in a little bit more contrast, and that looks awesome. So we'll go ahead and process this. So you can see now we have these really gorgeous Fujifilm film simulations that we have tweaked and edited as we wanted here in Fuji x -Ross Studio. It took no time at all. It gives us really amazing uh, options in terms of processing. So yes, it's not the same experience as going out and shooting only JPEGs and coming home and they're ready to go right out of the camera, but it's also pretty quick and easy to do in post. You don't have to do a lot of thinking about color grading. You can even select as I've done here through your seven preferred custom settings and just pick one that works well. Now, the other thing that I would encourage you to do with Fuji x -Ross Studio is if you don't have seven custom settings that you like, that you use often, download the software, shoot a bunch of images, play around with the Fujifilm recipes and find settings that work for you. And once you've created your custom settings in Fuji x -Ross Studio, bring those to your camera, then you'll have your seven custom settings that you can use on shoots. It'll make your life so much easier. It'll make your shooting experience really enjoyable. Um, and this is a really great way to tweak your settings because you can see everything on the computer. You can see what changes what when you make certain changes in the settings. You don't have to adjust in camera as you go and then come back and look at it and then go back and shoot and then come back and look at it. It makes the process so easy to be able to see everything in real time on one image on your computer. It's invaluable if you want to do this kind of thing. It's just really fun. So if you're a Fujifilm shooter, I'm going to give you an assignment and that is to download Fuji X Ross Studio, create some custom JPEG settings, go out and shoot, post them on Instagram, tag me, show me what you've made. Um, if you have pointers for me, if you have suggestions for me about film simulations, let me know. I'd love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to see you at the next one. Thank you. Thank you as always for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is